What's up guys, it's Wally, and today we're going to be doing a tier list of all the new announced Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet. Now keep in mind, I did say all the new announced Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet. I know that there's been a massive leak of the game, so a lot of people know a lot of the other new Pokemon that have yet to be announced. However, in this video, we're not going to be talking about those Pokemon. So if you guys have been actively trying to avoid leaks like I have, don't worry, this video is safe. So like I said, this is a tier list of all the new Pokemon. Uh, I know a lot of them aren't necessarily competitively viable. Uh, for instance, like all the starters are just the basic evolutions and not the final evolutions. So we won't be talking about their competitive viability, just mainly about how they look and my general opinion of them. For other Pokemon like the legendaries, we will talk a little bit about their competitive viability, at least for how much we know about them. Uh, but we'll also talk about their design as well. So if you see a Pokemon that is a basic level that might be higher than another Pokemon that seems like it would be good in battle, keep in mind that some of them aren't necessarily judged by their competitive viability. So we'll get into this tier list, but before we do, as always, if you guys are new here just haven't yet, please make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button. If you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like too. So we'll start with more basic Pokemon and kind of work our way up. And we'll begin with the starters. And so we'll go with the Pokemon that I'm going to go with once the game comes out, and that is Sprigatito. Now, I have to say, I'm typically not like a grass starter guy. I think the only generation where I went grass starter was Gen 7, and that was Relic going into Decidueye. And that was mainly because I really like the grass ghost type. But aside from that, I am typically a fire or a water starter, depending on the Pokemon. But for some reason, I was really drawn to Sprigatito. I think it's mainly because I'm more of a cat guy. I mean, I have a cat myself, and she's absolutely adorable, so I think I'm just drawn to them myself. But I also love the color green, and it's a grass cat. Plus, look at it. The, the thing's absolutely adorable. So there's no other place to put Sprigatito except for the S tier. And I have to say, if you disagree with me, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Now, next, we have to go with the other starter that, if Sprigatito wasn't a cat, would be the one that I'd end up going with, and that is Fue Coco. Now, I know a lot of people love Fue Coco. I even asked in chat today what starter they were going to go with, and I think the first five people said Fue Coco. I don't think many people said uh, Sprigatito or Quaxley, uh, so I think you're going to see a lot of Fue Coco in its final evolution out there. But I really don't blame you guys. It's pretty darn cute itself. I mean, I can't tell if it's a crocodile or a pepper, but dang, man, that thing's pretty awesome. And again, like I said, if Sprigatito wasn't a cat, this would definitely be my starter in this generation. So since I love it so much, but I can't put it above the starter that I'm going to go with, definitely has to go with the A tier. Now the final starter here, and I'm sure I'm probably going to get a little bit of hate for this, and I, I, I understand, I don't blame you, but we have to go with Quaxley. Now I know a lot of people do like Quaxley, and again, it is pretty cute, I don't blame you, it's, it's a little duck, but for me, I'm just not a big fan of it. I mean, maybe it's the hairstyle or something, but it, it just looks really cocky. It really kind of reminds me of like Ash's Oshawott from Generation 5. And that thing was uh, that thing was a little punk. So for some reason, I I'm kind of linking the two. And I know that's a little unfair to Quaxley. And I understand that. Uh, and I know you guys will let me know about that down in the comments. However, I'm going to have to go with my gut feeling here. And for me, Quaxley is definitely more of a C-tier Pokemon. Up next, we have the Paldean Wooper. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the original Wooper. I think it's absolutely adorable. Quagsire really isn't that bad either. So I'm going to have to judge it based on the original Wooper. So Paldean Wooper, in my mind, is really cool. We haven't really seen Paldean Quagsire, assuming that there is going to be one. So I don't necess necessarily know its final abilities or what its stats are going to be. So I can't really talk about, again, its competitive viability. However, we can talk about Paldean Wooper. So, like we see here, Paldean Wooper is a poison and ground type, which I think is a really cool typing. Um, it does have Poison Point and Water Absorb, which are two pretty decent abilities. Poison Point's nice because you could potentially poison a, an opponent that's like hitting you directly. And it's also nice with Water Absorb too, because as a ground type, you might see some water attacks. So, it's really nice to be able to get Water Absorb to really take away that weakness. So, Paldean Wooper or I guess potentially P Paldean Quagsire, uh, I think is a really cool Pokemon. Um, again, I think it's really cute too, even if it is brown now. But again, Wooper, because I do love the original Wooper and everything, really does have to go up in the A tier. So next is another Pokemon that I know people are really loving uh, based on like all the memes 
uh, all the puns, all of the references, and everything like that, we have LeChonk. And I have to agree with everyone, LeChonk is pretty awesome too. I honestly think it has the potential to be the next Bidoof. Um, I know some purists might completely disagree with me there, but I think it has the, uh, has the potential. I don't know if it's going to have like a final evolution, uh, or if this is the final evolution. I hope it has something that it evolves into. Um, although hopefully it's better than like Bidoof going to Bibarel. But um, either way, it's a really cool Pokemon. Again, I think it could really replace Bidoof as everyone's favorite Pokemon. Um, and it's just pretty cute too. Again, I'm really excited to see if it does evolve and what it's going to evolve into. Um, but for Lugchonk itself as this Pokemon, definitely has to go up to S tier. Eh, you know what? I'm sorry, Sprigatito. I, I think you're cute and I love cats and everything. Lechonk has to be at the top of S tier, though. The next is another Pokemon that I know is one of the first to be uh, to be kind of be released and, and shown to the public, and that's Smoliv. Now, this is going to be kind of a ridiculous explanation, so I'm really sorry ahead of time. First, let's talk about the pros. It's really cute, right? Also, it's got an awesome name, Smoliv. What a great pun. You know, it's a nice mashup of small and olive, and uh, it just really fits the Pokemon. Um, other than that, though, I think when we get down to it, it's an olive. I don't really like olives, if I'm being completely honest with you. Like, maybe occasionally on a sandwich or on a pizza, but in general, olives really aren't my thing. I know that's a ridiculous reason to kind of knock it down a notch, but unfortunately for me and the fact that I just don't like olives, small goes in the B tier. But next, we have to talk about Fido. Another Pokemon that has a really great pun. Fido is really effing cute. And I know I talked about Sprigatito being one of my favorites because I'm more of a cat guy. Um, but just because I'm a cat guy doesn't mean I'm not a dog guy too, you know? I love dogs. And I think Fido is adorable too. And I have to say, I wasn't the biggest fan of Yamper in Generation 8. But I think Game Freak really redeemed itself with Fido. And again, having the pun for the name I think is really cool too. So for me, Fido definitely is an A tier Pokemon. Next, we have a Pokemon that I honestly thought was going to be really interesting because I thought it was going to be kind of similar to Sableye, mainly because I thought the look was somewhat similar. Turns out it's not really that close to Sableye, but still a pretty cool looking Pokemon anyways, and that's Grafaii. Now, if we look at its actual abilities, again, unfortunately, it doesn't get Prankster, which, again, I thought it was going to be kind of like Sableye in that sense because... I feel like there's kind of like a similar look to it. However, it only gets Unburdened and Poison Touch. Not really the worst abilities by, by any means, but it not having Prankster kind of knocks it down a notch for me. Again, the design is really cool. It's a toxic monkey. I think that's pretty awesome. And again, you know, the, the promo video that they did for it was pretty darn cool too. So, you know, it, it kind of brings it up a little bit. But unfortunately, I think Grafaii, because... Again, it didn't meet my expectations, the high expectations that I set for it. Um, again, I haven't really seen the stats or anything like that, so I can't really comment on that. But the fact that I thought it was going to get Prankster and it didn't kind of knocks it down for me. And so that's why it's going to go in the C tier along with Quaxley. Next up is another Pokemon that had a real cool promo video. And so I will say, if you guys didn't see the promo video to this Pokemon, make sure to go back to Pokemon's page and watch it because I thought it was pretty cool. But this Pokemon is called Gravard. At least I think that's the name of it. It's either Gravard or Grievard. So I'm going to keep calling it Gravard, but if I'm saying that wrong, someone please correct me in the comments. But this Pokemon is really awesome. And like I said, it had a really cool promo video. However, that's about where things end. You know, it's a dog, it had a cool promo video. That's great. However, when you actually go back and look at its ability and everything like that, it only has pickup. Now, I don't know if you guys have used pickup before in a battle, uh, but it really doesn't do anything. It's great if you're walking around in the wild because you end up picking up items that you wouldn't otherwise find. But when you're actually in battle and doing this competitively, pickup really doesn't have any benefit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to have an evolution. I assume that it probably will. Um, I could be wrong though, um, but until we know, I can't really put this any higher than a D tier. It's a really cute Pokemon, it's a dog, again had a real cool promo video, but with the ability pick up and everything, I can't put it above D tier. But next, we're going to talk about a Pokemon that I'm actually going to rate a little bit higher, and you guys might disagree with me on this, uh, because I know some people do have bias against Pikachu variants, but we're going to go here with Palmy. 
So like I said, Palmy is the Pikachu, at least I believe, is the Pikachu variant here for Generation 9. Now, if you guys don't know, there is a Pikachu variant every single generation that's come out. Obviously, Pikachu was Gen 1, and then there was Pichu, uh, plus Ol' Minoon, and Mulga, and, and so on. So, there's one in pretty much every generation. I think this is the one for this one. I think it's really cute. It's an electric mouse. I mean, how, how can you get really upset about that? Um, but other than that, I think people really underestimate Pikachu variants. I mean, obviously, we know that Pachirisu was a world winner at one point. Uh, being able to take, you know, a lot of attacks and being able to use the follow me. Um, I think that was really awesome. And even in last generation, we had more Peko. More Peko was really awesome. It kept alternating between an electric and a dark type. And if you guys didn't see the video in which we used more Peko to really level some people on the ladder, I definitely recommend checking that out too. But either way, I think people are going to underestimate Palmy. Um, I think it's really cool if we go back and actually look at its abilities and everything. Uh, if I can actually find it on the list, there it is. Uh, we have Static and Natural Cure. Again, two pretty decent abilities. One to be able to, you know, obviously paralyze your opponent. And the Natural Cure, which I think has the ability to, uh, I think, cure like a status effect of your Pokemon. So two really, you know, not amazing abilities, but pretty cool abilities. So I think people are going to underestimate Palmy. Um... And again, you know, I kind of like Pikachu variants myself, so I'm going to put it a little bit higher. I know some people might put it down like the C or D tier, but for me, I'm definitely going to put it up in the B tier. Next, we're going to talk about the bots legendaries. Now, we have Coridon and we have Miraidon. Now, as of right now, at least for me, because I haven't looked at any of the leaks or anything, we really don't know anything about these Pokemon. Even if you go to the website for Coridon, all they say is that Coridon and Miraidon grace the covers of Scarlet and Violet, respectively. So, again, really don't know anything about them. Don't even know they're typing. So it's going to have to just come down to design and what I think of them. So we'll start with Coridon. For me, I mean, it's a really cool-looking Pokemon. Don't get me wrong. Like, they, they designed this really, really well. However, in the trailers and everything... I know you're able to ride it, and I, th I think that's really awesome. However, it has wheels on it, and it doesn't use the wheels. It just runs. And, like, I understand that, you know, it's a Pokemon that's really set in the past, and, you know, it's kind of more prehistoric than anything, so not using the wheels, I guess, kind of matches up to what the Pokemon's supposed to be. However, it just bothers me that it has wheels, but it still runs. So, I, I don't know. For me... That bothers me a little bit, but at the same time, the design's really cool. The color scheme's awesome. Um, and again, it, it's a rideable legendary Pokemon. And I feel like it's going to be really, really beneficial when you get into the game. Especially considering the fact that it's an open world game. So being able to travel a little faster is really cool. But again, the fact that it only runs and doesn't use its wheels, uh, at least from what I've seen, um, kind of bothers me a little bit. So I, I think those things are going to kind of even out and kind of like what it was with Smolov. And we're going to kind of put it up there in the B tier. Although I will say it's high B tier. Again, the design is really cool. I love the color scheme. So it has to go there for me. Now Miraidon is a little bit of a different story. Uh, now I'm going to be someone who gets Pokemon Violet. Uh, partially because I've always kind of gotten the second title in every game. You know, Pokemon Y, Pokemon Moon... Um, and even the ones in the back, Pokemon Blue, uh, Silver, and, and so on. So, uh, you know, I kind of have that bias towards that. But also, it's also the fact that Miraidon just looks so darn cool. And the futuristic design to it is awesome. And for me, I am a big fan of, like, blue and purple. Um, as you guys can tell from, like, my logos and everything like that. Those, that's kind of my color scheme. So, it just really kind of fits with me. I know it's got a little yellow on it too, and I think that really accentuates the, the other colors too. So um, I think the design is just absolutely perfect. It's a really cool Pokemon. Again, another rideable Pokemon. Um, it is a legendary, and I feel like I have a really high bar for legendaries because, you know, they're kind of the centerpiece of, you know, the story and of the game right now. And since they're the legendaries and they're the box arts and everything like that, feel like I hold them to a really, really high standard. And I think this really just about hits that bar. So I feel like I can put it all the way up in high A tier. Um, I think for it to be S tier, it would have had to have just blown me away. 
And don't get me wrong, this is right on the verge of that, but I don't know why. I I, I think based on what I've seen in the in the trailers and everything like that, for some reason there's something about it that just doesn't like set it over the top like that. But at the same time, the design of it, I think the utility of it, again, you know, being able to ride that all the way across the map in an open world game is going to save a lot of time and it's going to be really beneficial. Uh, so it's really going to have to go all the way at the top of A tier. Now we're going to talk about two Pokemon that I'm really excited about, uh, mainly because I'm just a really big fan of Mega Man, and those are Armor Rogue and Cerulege. So we'll go, you know, kind of one by one here. We'll start with Armor Rogue. Um, first of all, it's a really cool Pokemon. We don't know a ton about it, obviously, kind of like all the other Pokemon. But what we do know is it is going to be exclusive to Pokemon Scarlet. Uh, it is a Fire and Psychic type, which I actually think is pretty cool. Then again, I did play Pokemon back in Gen 1 when Psychic type was kind of an OP typing. Uh, nowadays with Dark, Steel, uh, and Fairy, and things like that, you know, it's not as great. However, I still think it's a really cool typing. Plus, that is the same uh, typing as the final evolution as the Fire Starter from Gen 6, which was my favorite game. So it kind of does have a soft spot in my heart. Plus, it also does have the ability Flash Fire, and even though Armor Rogue, it being a fire type, isn't really going to see any fire attacks go its way, uh, it's nice because you could potentially bait your opponent into doing a fire move into it, which means that it's not going to do any damage, and Armor Rogue is going to get a beef up in its next fire attack. So that's always nice. So with those things, uh, you know, it, it really does kind of elevate to the top of the list for me. Uh, plus, if you actually look at the design of the Pokemon, it's really effing cool. Uh, again, like I talked about, I'm a huge fan of Mega Man, and this really gives me Mega Man vibes. So, Armor Rogue is really cool. Um, but where do I put it, though? You know, that's 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 the tough thing. Um, because, again, you know, I was a little harsh on the Box Legends. I, I love the design of them. I think they look really cool. But, again, as Box Legends, I feel like, you know... They deserve that extra care. So they really need to blow me away to hop up into the A and the S tier. However, with Armor Rogue and Cerulege, I mean, it's very possible that they're going to play a pretty big part in the storyline um, because they do look like those type of Pokemon. However, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just going to have to judge them based on just being new Pokemon that are going to be out in the wild. So based on that and with the uh, kind of design that they have, I think Armor Rogue... Only because I want to be able to put Cerulege, you know, in a different category. I am going to put Armor Rogue up in the A tier. Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter where in the A tier, right? Well, we'll put it behind Wooper just because it, it, it's Wooper. So uh, I don't want to disrespect Wooper like that. But uh, for me, Armor Rogue definitely deserves A tier, if not S tier, but definitely comfortably in the A tier. Now, Cerulege, on the other hand... Um, and I am going to show my little biasness towards, uh, biasness? I don't think that's a word. But either way, uh, my bias towards uh, Pokemon Violet here, uh, again, like I said, it's going to be the game that I'm going to end up going with. And I just really love the uh, blue and purple color scheme. Um, again, you guys have seen my logo. I am definitely a blue, purple, uh, black, green type, you know, type color scheme kind of guy. So... For some reason, Cerulege just really kind of speaks to me a little bit more. I mean, that design is really awesome. And the fact that it's a fire and ghost type, too, makes it even cooler. And plus, if you do end up going head-to-head -head with an Armor Rogue, uh, the fact that you're fire ghost going against a fire psychic means you're going to have the edge because you are going to have the stab ghost move that will be super effective against Armor Rogue. However, I am looking a little too far down the line. But this typing is really awesome. Reminds me of Pokemon like Chandelure. Um, so that makes me really happy. It does have the same ability as Armor Rogue with Flash Fire, uh, which again, I think is really cool. You can still do the same type of cheese that you would do with Armor Rogue by switching it in and try to get a fire type going into you. Um, so that's always a fun thing to do. But for me, Cerulege, like I said when I was talking about Armor Rogue, I, I just feel like I, I want to put it into a different category. And I think based on how much I'm really kind of raving about it right now, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to put it up in S tier. Again, the, the typing, the ability, which is really cool. Nothing that's extremely OP, but still a pretty good ability. And again, the design just really sets it over the top for me. And that's why it really belongs in the S tier. Next is another Pokemon that I'm really excited about too. And that is Belly Bolt. 
Now, first of all, I will say when this Pokemon was introduced, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, it's a really cool design. It's pretty cute. Uh, you know, in the way that it walked, I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, but they really fooled me, I will say, because I totally thought those things on the side of its head were its eyes. Turns out that's not the case. It's just these little yellow things right here. I think that's even cuter. And I'll be honest with you, it, by the looks of it, it really kind of gave me like, I guess like Chansey vibes. I don't know, like if you kind of like overlaid them, they, they kind of look very similar. So I thought that was really cool. But I think the really cool thing about it is its ability electromorphosis. So I, I'm not sure if anyone kind of figured out uh, exactly what that does and the effect that it is. But uh, basically what it says is it's a new ability appearing for the first time. Uh, becomes charged when hit by an attack, boosting the power of the next electric type move that it uses. And again, I don't know exactly what effect that's going to be. However, I it you know here it says it becomes charged. Now there was a move. Uh, I guess there is a move still that's in Pokemon that's called Charge. And what that did was basically double the power of your next electric attack and also raise your special defense stat by one point. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the case right here. I don't know if it's going to get the special defense boost, if it's going to, you know, double the power of your next electric type move or anything like that. But I think that's really interesting. I'm really excited to find out exactly what it does and what this ability is going to be because I think it's an interesting one that could actually pay a, play a really big part when it comes to, like, the competitive play. So, you know. If it actually is a really incredible ability like that, where it could just be like an instant charge when it gets hit, then I think it might be something that you're going to see in competitive and something that you might see me use as well. So I'm really excited about Belly Bolt. Again, I think it's a really, really cool design. Um, I know the A's are really stacking up, and, and I feel like I feel like I'm being a little generous with some of these, but Belly Bolt, for me, definitely deserves to be up in the A tier. Um, I'll even put it behind Fido, but... Even so, it deserves to be up there. I think it's a really cool design. It's going to be a great Pokemon when it comes to competitive, especially if Electromorphosis does what I think it does. So that's why Belly Bolt ends up getting an A tier score. Um, again, I'm really excited about it. I really want to see what it can do in the next generation. Next is another Pokemon that was one of the first to actually be introduced to people, and that is Titan. Now, I'll be honest with you, when Titan came out, I was pretty excited about it. It looked really cool. It was big, so I figured it was going to be like a pretty hard hitter. Um, and obviously, we all know the stats on it, so it's very possible that it might still be. However, looking at like the abilities and everything like that, as Thick Fat and Slush Rush. Now, those are great abilities. Don't get me wrong. Thick Fat's nice because it actually lowers the power of Fire type moves as well as Ice type moves uh, by fifty percent. So what would typically be a super effective move from a fire type move would essentially become just a regular effective move, just a neutral effective. So that's really cool. And then I also think that Slush Rush would be awesome too because, you know, we've actually dealt with a couple Sand Rush teams, some Swift Swim teams. So why not go with a Slush Rush? I think that would be really cool and, you know, a little underutilized. However, I understand why it is underutilized because... That would mean that you'd have a couple of ice type pokemon out there and no offense to ice type i think it's a really cool typing there are some really cool ice type pokemon but when it comes to competitive i know ice type isn't necessarily the strongest type out there i mean calyrex ice was a really strong pokemon but you know again that's because it was calyrex but other than that though i still think ice types are really cool uh but still so titan to me just, I don't know how great it would be competitively. I mean, hopefully it's going to prove me wrong. I really, really do hope it does prove me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I, I don't know how I necessarily feel about it. The design was really cool too because, you know, it's a, it's a land whale, essentially. But as other Pokemon started getting released and we started seeing the designs of them, it, just to me, Titan wasn't up to the standard that I saw from these new Pokemon. Kind of like what I talked about Armor Rogue and Cerulege. And again, they might play a big part in the story. So, you know, that might be part of the reason why they got such, you know, an intricate design. But to me, I feel like Titan kind of falls short here. I think there could be a lot of fun with Slush Rush. 
However, I think the Titan's going to have to be in the C tier for me. Next up, we have Cyclozar. Now, Cyclozar looks like a really cool Pokemon, uh, and I'm pretty excited about it, but mainly just because of the one move that it has that they introduced. Uh, well, I'll talk about that in just a second, but in terms of design, it actually looks pretty cool. Um, but I will say it looks a little too similar to the legendary Pokemon. And not saying that that's phoning it in or anything, because it's actually possible, possible, that it could be pre-evo to uh, the legendary. So maybe it's not phoning it in. Maybe it's just a really good design because they linked it really well with the legendaries. But at the same time, you know, it's okay. I do kind of like the color scheme, but again, it's, it's a little meh. I do like the dragon normal type. I think that's really cool because it's something that, you know, I really haven't seen before. With the exception of Drampa, of course. I guess Drampa's the other normal dragon type. But aside from that, really haven't seen it. So I think that's a really cool typing that should be explored. Um, its ability Shed Skin's pretty nice too because uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's an ability that actually, you know, you have a chance at every turn to potentially, you know, uh, I guess remove the uh, condition that you have on you. So I think that's really awesome. But again, the main reason why I'm really excited for this Pokemon is because of its move Shed Tail. So again, what it does, it creates a substitute and also switches out with a party or a Pokemon that's in your party. Granted, it does do 50% damage uh, to Cyclozar before it goes back, but being able to set up a substitute and send out a new Pokemon, dude, that's a huge benefit right there. And like I said in, in a previous video, there are a lot of good uses for that. It could be great for Trick Rooms. It could just be great for any team, to be completely honest with you. So I think that's going to be really exciting in the next generation. And that's part of the reason why I'm really excited about Cyclozar. Now again, because of the design, I'm kind of, you know, 50-50 on it, you know? But again, I think the fact that it has, you know, a really cool typing... It has a pretty decent uh, ability, and it has that really awesome new move. I think this thing definitely is like a border AB Pokemon. So just because the A group is like extremely crowded, I feel like I need to put Cyclozar like right at the top of the B tier. But again, that's going to be like a kind of like a borderline Pokemon for me because again, I think it's really cool. The move is great. It's a cool typing and everything like that, but... Uh, the design just leaves a bit to be desired, so that's why it's going to be at the top of B tier. Next is another Pokemon that I'm really excited about for multiple reasons, but mainly because Girafferig is finally getting another evolution. Now, Girafferig used to be one of my favorite Pokemon for no other reason than the fact that it was a giraffe, and it was a psychic type, and I thought psychic types were really, really strong back in the day. Mainly because I played Gen 1, and back then, psychic types were pretty broken, but... Either way, I really liked Girafferig, and I was like, man, when is this thing going to get never or get another evolution? I mean, we've seen so many other Pokemon get another evolution, but Girafferig just kind of got left in the dust. So I'm really excited about the fact that it's finally getting another evolution, and this thing looks so effing awesome. I mean, first of all, look at the design of it. It looks like Girafferig. However, its tail essentially becomes, you know, part of its neck and on top of its head. I don't know. I, th I think that's really awesome. And I love the fact that Girafferig turns into Ferrigarath. You know, they're just kind of reversing the letters. And either way, both of them are palindromes. And I don't know why, for some reason, the nerd, you know, the nerd in me actually really loves that and appreciates that. But other than that, again, another normal psychic type. I, I think that's really awesome. I know that's going to be tough against dark types. However, I don't know. It's still Ferrigarath. I don't know. It's still really cool. Uh, plus, it has two really awesome abilities in Kudchu and Armor Tail. Both, I believe, are new abilities. Well, yeah, as you can see, they are new abilities. Kudchu essentially makes it so that uh, when a Pokemon eats a berry, it will eat it one more time at the end of the turn. So, for instance, uh, if you're holding a Citrus Berry, you know, essentially when you get down to half HP, you eat the Citrus Berry and you're going to heal up one quarter of your original health. So that's going to bring you back up to three quarters if you get down to exactly half. However, if you were holding Kudchu, uh, you would end up eating two citrus berries. So you would go down to half, you'd eat the first citrus berry, get up to 75%, and then eat another one and get all the way back up to full health. I think that's really awesome. 
Um, and, you know, it, it has a lot of great effects. And, you know, you don't just have to do that with the citrus berry either. You know, there are multiple berries that are out there that can, you know, potentially up your speed, up your, uh, your attacker, or things like that. So, you know, you can use it with a lot of different berries. But the other one is the one that I think is a little more interesting, and that is Armor Tail. So what that means is that opposing Pokemon are unable to use priority moves. Now, what I'm not 100% sure about, but the thing that I'm really, really worried about, is the fact that Protect is a priority move. You know, it gets an additional priority because you're going to, you know, Protect before anyone else moves. That's the whole point of Protect. So does that mean that a Pokemon's not going to be able to use Protect when it's out there? Because if so, that's really scary. I mean, a lot of Pokemon do run Protect, and f for good reason. You know, I, I do on a lot of my Pokemon. So the fact that this ability makes it so... Or doesn't necessarily make it, but could potentially make it that you can't use Protect or Sucker Punch or Fake Out or anything like that, uh, that's a little scary. But if you're using it for your benefit, hey, that's pretty awesome, right? But either way, it's got two new abilities. I think they're both pretty awesome. The design, again, is just absolutely flawless. And then the normal psychic typing, again, while really difficult against dark types, uh, I think is going to be really awesome. So I know S type is usually reserved for Pokemon that, you know, j just like a couple Pokemon, like one or two that are just really, really special. But unfortunately for you guys, you guys are going to see a tier list with four S tier types. So for me, Farigaraf definitely needs to go all the way up in the S tier. Next up is a terrifying Pokemon in Cloth. Now, first of all, I will say Cloth is pretty cool looking. It does kind of give me like Krabby Kingler vibes, of course, um, but just a lot, lot larger. Like maybe even like G-Max Kingler, you know? But even then, this one's a little stockier and a little beefier, but it's a really cool Pokemon. Apparently Game Freak liked it enough, or at least the tier maker liked it enough to put it on here twice. So we'll only put one of them, don't worry. But uh, looking at its at the Pokemon itself and its ability, again, look at first of all, the design is pretty cool. Uh, again, it's a little creepy looking. It looks a little mechanical, but also natural at the same time. Um, it does look extremely powerful, and I think in the competitive sense, it's going to be a really good Pokemon. Not just because of its abilities, but because, I mean, first of all, it's a rock type. And I know rock does have a lot of, um, I guess, weaknesses that, that you're going to have to contend with. But still, rock is a pretty good typing. And I, I'm really looking forward to, hopefully, it being a stronger type in this next generation. Hopefully, cloth is going to be the one to kind of break out and make rock types kind of come to the forefront of the main typings. Instead of it just being dark. You know, steel, uh, ground, and, you know, and typings like that. So um, I'm really hoping Cloth is going to kind of break that mold. But like I said, the other thing that's really great is its ability. Of course, it has shell armor, which is nice. But the new ability, Anger Shell, is awesome. Because basically what it does is that once Cloth drops below uh, half HP, it gets angry. And so what it does is it lowers its defense and special defense, but boosts its attack, special attack, and speed stats. And if that sounds familiar, that is just like the move Shell Smash. So I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm sure some people know, but I'm not sure if Cloth gets Shell Smash yet. If it does, though, that would be pretty amazing. Imagine doing that and also getting your Anger Shell so you're able to, you know, granted you are going to be lowering your defense and special defense by two stages, but your speed, attack, and special attack are all going to rise by... I think it's three stages because Shell Smash does two stages, and I think Anger Shell is only going to do one. But still, raising those stats by three stages, that's going to give you a big advantage, and you can potentially knock out some Pokemon before they even get the chance to, you know, take advantage of your defense and special defense drops. So I think this ability, especially if you're able to kind of pair it with Shell Smash, is going to be really awesome. And again, the fact that it's a rock type is really cool. Um, again, I will say it, it is a little weird because it does look a little mechanical. However, you know, to me, it is a pretty cool Pokemon. And I know, again, the A tier is really getting crowded, but I feel like with the design, the ability, 
and the fact that it is a rock type and the fact that I'm really hoping that it's going to break the mold on that, it definitely deserves the A tier rank right here. Now, last but not least, we have Wiglet. Now, this thing is pretty cool, I will say. And I know a lot of people thought that it could potentially just be a variant of Diglett. You know, I know we already got one in Alola, and that thing is, it's pretty cool too. I'm a little weirded out by its hair, but, it, you know, it's still pretty cool, and it's nice that Diglett got a variant. So, that's nice, but I will say I am pretty happy that this thing is not a variant of Diglett. The main reason why is because of its explanation, because it's said that Wiglet's resemblance to Diglett might be a mere coincidence, a result of its adaptation to its environment. So the fact that, you know, it's kind of a product of, I guess, evolution, I think that's pretty cool. You know, again, it's not related to Diglett. It is a completely different Pokemon, but it did kind of, in a way, evolve from it. You know, so I, I think that's a really cool aspect to it. Um, but my love for Wiglet kind of ends there. Um, I don't necessarily see how it's going to be a big, like, competitive Pokemon here. Um, it's cool that it's a water type, especially since it's coming out of the ground. It looks like a ground type, so you might end up tricking some people with that. Um, but even so, you know, its abilities are gooey and rattled. Um, you know, gooey is pretty cool. I think, uh, I think it was Gudra who got gooey. Um, however, you know, aside from that, I don't really see it being a competitively viable Pokemon. You know, there's, there's nothing that to me screams, Hey, I'm definitely going to take some people out in competitive. So for me, you know, aside from the fact that it is kind of, again, just an evolution, but not evolution of Diglett, I think that's really cool, but that's really the only cool thing about it to me. So I'm really sorry to do it to Wiglet because, again, I think it's a cool-looking Pokemon. But for me, it's got to go in the C tier. So that's our list right there. Now, keep in mind, these are my opinions. Uh, again, some of them are really just based off, you know, their look. Some of them based off of just kind of how I feel about them from what I've seen in trailers. And some are based off of their competitive viability. So those are really just my opinions. Again, some of you guys might disagree. Some of you might agree with me on some of these. One way or the other, if you guys do disagree or agree, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this list. What would you change? And all that kind of good stuff. I'm really excited for this game to come out. I think once I actually see what these Pokemon can do in the game, uh, this tier list might change a bit. But uh, I think we'll do that after we get the game and after we beat it and after we get a chance to use all these guys. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like, and we'll see you guys next time.